guys, welcome back to Everyday Struggle on the Desk of Academics and Wayno here. Hopefully you're having a great morning so far or afternoon. I'm feeling upbeat, I'm feeling like moving and shit. You always are. Yo, what do I people know. watch the show the most? Yo? I would like for people to tell us. Like do y'all watch time? it when, w whenever it goes up, 11 or maybe yeah, that's what 3 I'm p.m.? Saying, <laughs> or like do y'all watch it on lunchtime or late at night? You know, sometimes we watch this stuff late at night right before I go to sleep. A lot yeah. of people tell me they watch it at lunchtime. Yeah, same. So when we, like when we not on time, they be like, yo, y'all fucking up my lunch. I get that a lot. It's his fault, usually. But not today. I He's think today good. we're on time. I've been really, I've been here for y'all. I He's come in. He's been on time and awake. <laughs> the, desk, the desk is. It, it, there we go. No, uh, never mind. That's exactly <laughs> what I thought. All right, man. We ain't gonna go there today. We ain't gonna go there today. All right, so yesterday we spent a lot of time trying to figure out what's happening with Lil Uzi Vert and his label. He said he's being trapped, that he cannot release his album Eternal A Take. Uh, DJ Drama says otherwise. So after that happened, Uzi basically started an entire free Uzi campaign on Instagram. Eventually he tagged Rock Nation in one of the posts as he was previewing a new verse, saying back in the studio, thank you, Rock Nation. And now it sounds like he is officially, like Wayno said yesterday, man by Rock Nation. So what does this mean? Are they going to get him out of this deal that he seems to have a lot of issues with? I don't know, but I will say that Rock Nation seems like the uh, the human resources of hip-hop. It seems like whenever pro people are having trouble <laughs> with whatever they got going on, they tap on Rock Nation. Um, with all of this being said, I mean, I'm, I want Uzi to get his shit figured out, but I feel bad for drama in them because it, it really make, it paints them as the villains, and I, I don't think they did anything wrong to this kid. I, I, I feel like that Uzi has really spun this shit on his head. Yeah, he's been ways. taking a lot of personal shots. Like, if you want your album to drop, number one rule, don't hang with the boss's girlfriend. I don't know. I don't know, yeah, I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't know what that means either. I'm going to just skip that conversation. <laughs> I don't know what that but, means either. Uh, hey, honestly, seeing this yesterday it confirmed a lot of things that I was thinking. What? That Uzi, at least he believes he's in a bad deal, and I believe that Rock Nation, just like how Wayne enlisted the help of Rock Nation, um, to get out of his deal with Birdman and Cash Money. I believe Uzi's enlisted. And from what I was, um, another thing I was told is that Uzi supposedly is going to be out of this contract soon. Wow. Okay? And the, the album should be coming as like a last requirement. That's what I'm hearing. So, again, if that's the case, who knows what it is? Because, you know what, I do feel bad for drama. But, I mean, that's why you're a label. Like, mad people have came up. Remember when Waco was like, yo, fuck Atlantic, this is the third. But they're faceless org, right? Like, 20 niggas can say fuck Atlantic, and as soon as that new Kodak album and that new Meek album and they're not complaining about Atlantic drops, we don't really care about the niggas who are complaining. So when do you care about Uzi complaining? Because, I mean, what no, we look No, we at do, because, because Generation Now is really, uh, let's just call it, it's a it's label, label really that, that's built and the face of it is Uzi. Right. Like the the other artists that signed to it, they have two other artists. Little James you know, and Jack Harlow. We don't we don't know them. Right. So if your star is complaining, we're just gonna and he's not even pointing at this generation now. He's calling names. He won't do this. He won't do that. And it's not like these are guys who are just executives. I mean, drama is within the as much as within the culture as shit. Most artists themselves. Absolutely. Like I look at drama as an artist. Absolutely. So again, so that's the thing. You made the point about propaganda. It always rallies the fans. But Uzi's a big enough artist. Did he need to rally his fans? Could he not have reached out behind the scenes? Like when you're a superstar like him and you're having trouble, do you need that? Or could you hit someone from Rock Nation for help without? No, I feel like you have to do the propaganda. Shots. Yeah. The reason why you gotta do the propaganda is that your fans are asking for music. And you can't give them the real reason why you're not giving them. Well, the, the, is he? I, I feel like he just doesn't want to be blamed. I, I, I feel like uh, for the music being delayed. Yeah, I mean, well, artists usually don't. They never want to be in a position where it's on them. It's easy to point the finger somewhere else and delegate. Yo, it's not me. It's them. So that the fans attack that portion. But I, it just doesn't make sense to me. I, I feel like this doesn't have to happen in order for Uzi to be popping. Like, he's popping regardless. He's a superstar, right? Yeah. So I, I really want to know what's his what's his problem. I tried to reach out to a few people to see if I could get a conversation with him. I wasn't able to. But um, I really want to know, like, what's his real gripe? So Jack Harlow, that's one of the artists you're talking about on Generation Now. He said on Instagram, just sign my soul away. Double tap if you can't wait for eternal a take. <laughs> hey, you, you know right. what's funny? Like, and that's what I'm saying about that propaganda portion, like, because of social media and the easy the ease of access to fans, like you know, there was a time where the record label really couldn't was the middleman between you and your audience, mm -hmm. to pretty much a, a, a large uh, extent. Mm -hmm. Them and also media, you had to you had to go to the radio station to try and get a message out. Now you get on your phone, you get shit popping. So you're seeing a lot of these artists 
like they're they're forcing their ways out of deals or trying to finesse their way and they're using that propaganda shit. Look at Pump. Pump went on this whole free agent. Yo, I'm a free agent. Everybody want to sign me. Sign back with the same people who he went to court. He was court. already signed to, right? Yeah, he, he went to court, right. got out of the deal, and he signed back to them just for more money. Again, I, I'm not going to say I could blame the artist because labels are money hungry too, but a lot of this is just money shit going back I mean, and forth. It's business, though. Yeah, it's business. Right. The fans, we're just going for who we like. Um, I just don't like the whole free Uzi. Like, like saying free, when, when you think of I free, right? I just think about certain campaigns. The locks had they free the locks, like let the locks go campaign, and that was the whole thing with them trying to get off a of bad boy. Mm -hmm. Then they had their gripes with um, them trying to get their publishing back from Diddy. Like we knew exactly what the target thing was. With this, we really don't know. It's like free Uzi, but free him from what? Is it free from Generation Now? Is it free from the previous management he had? Is it free him from Atlantic? The way he's talking, it sounds like Generation Now. So this dude, Jack Harlow, does it sound like he's mocking Uzi? Absolutely he's in mocking this post? Absolutely. You know what I mean? So well, he probably if you has look at the comments, on the situation. No, no, well, if you look at the comments, you drama was in the comments saying, hey, don't let me fuck up your career too. So right. I, you're like, I feel like drama and them, they realize how social media, they can't twist and change the social media wave in their favor. Well, Y'all are the executives. Well, they, the art, the, the fans love the the artists. But like playing, all right. So just giving it an even playing field on both sides. I don't know like what's right or what's wrong. All I can say is that you can never fight a lie, right? Like when 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 a lie happens, the only way to beat it is to let it run its course. You can't if, if or something. Or lie even more. Yeah. Lie even more. <laughs> Tell yeah. a bigger. Well, I don't lie. Even more. Tell like, a more entertaining lies. Yeah, I mean the yeah. thing is, is like if somebody, if you feel like somebody's lied on you, eventually it'll be figured out what what went wrong. You know. So I I, I just feel like. For the the relationship that Uzi and them had with Canon and Drama, mm -hmm. and them together as a company, this could have been fixed behind closed doors. Now it's out in the open. Hopefully, it will run its course, and we'll see in the end. You know what this shit was all right. about. Remember when we talked about Two Chains a couple weeks ago? Rock Nation hitting him up when he was hot, and him saying, "If I can't bring like the dude who put me on, I'm not coming." I don't think a lot of artists feel that way. A lot of times, it comes down to business is business. Fuck our relationship, which is unfortunate. Listen, I. Um, another thing I heard was that this could have all been avoided, and you know if what? what? I, well, I'm gonna tell you. Right. I'm, I'm gonna tell you in a second. But, these days. <laughs> yo, I'm doing my work out here, hey, man. Hey, hey, oh, oh, and, and by the way, I'm seeing. I foresee other artists, young artists, who are one album fucking deep doing this shit too, which is gonna be very weird as people sign contracts when niggas could bully them their way out of it or start again. Not every company is like a land that could withstand thousands or hundreds of thousands of people just saying fuck them, right? I, like, drama needs his reputation that when he pulls up to someone to say, yo, you should sign with Generation Now, look at Uzi, they're gonna be like, why the fuck am I signing with you? Like, Birdman was offended, and Birdman owns yeah, Cash right. Money, which is a bigger entity. Mm -hmm. He was offended when people kept saying he was robbing people, notoriously he pulled up on Charlamagne, <laughs> right? right? Yeah, yeah. Because he felt like propaganda was being spread about him and his business. So I do see new artists looking at this and probably taking notes. Um, the second thing, I heard this could have been avoided. I heard, listen, if l the, the label deal that um, Generation Now has, if y'all got that because of Uzi, if Uzi was given some type of ownership, a part, like, part of the mix, he wouldn't be be this bad. But That's come on, man. That's you can't, That's That's this That's thing, like, don't kill a messenger. You, I, don't kill a I messenger. feel you, but like I, I'm just thinking in terms of business. Wait, right? yeah, hold on, hold on. This is a good conversation though, because right. you you're coming from a managerial right. pr perspective, and you've been like on that side of things where like you could have an artist, but then usually people don't hear the other side. Right. So, so if you sign to an entity, I, I like this, right? Like I have a company. So if I sign an artist and like, I, I'm already who I am. Like, one thing about drama, drama is a legend. Like, he's very re respected in the game or whatever. If I am who I am, and me and my guy started a company, and yeah, you the flagship artist, and we, and you know, we built you, and you built yourself along with us, that doesn't entitle you to be, like, a, a part owner in the label. But aren't there level sets? So if you sign an artist, and, like, he blows up, and they want to renegotiate, you can, you can do renegotiate. something there. But sometimes I feel like artists probably just sign. They make a lot of bread, and Yo, they're like, fuck this contract, I artists signed. Feel That's just like, bad business. Artists but. feel like anybody making any money off of them is not fair, yeah, sure period. Like, if a, you could make, a, a nigga could make $10 million. If you made two, you could say, all right, you made $10 million, I made $2 million. Why the fuck are you getting two? That's what they're gonna say. Why are you getting two million? 
I could have had 12. I could do this <laughs> shit myself because I'm the rapper. Like, it, it does not work like that. You know what I mean? It, it just does not work. Like, no bit, act, you know fucking business. You might not you might not know everything in music business, but I mean, you know business, period. No, I mean, I completely get it, but act, no, no, no. Real no, quick, no, no, no. devil's advocate. No, 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 Let me play no, no, devil's advocate no. with act. Real Go quick, ahead. real quick. I want to act. Do it. It's a new, a, a new little popping media nigga, right? Came up watching you, you see him doing his thing, and you're like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna build my company like a label where I sign other little media motherfuckers. And now he surpasses where academics was at one point in time. Now the nigga's like, yo, I'm making you all this bread, nigga. I need to be in on the top line of the business. What you gonna say? Hell no, nigga. No, You're no, not no, letting no, him no. get in on that. Would you nah, open negotiations at not, least? Not necessarily. It depends. It depends. Like if he comes I, with a reasonable offer. We talking about no, 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 like, no, 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 this no, 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 the main reason why I'm driving either revenue or attention or I'm helping building that brand, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes rather than just like giving somebody a check, we, we've been champing a lot of shit where people are saying ownership, Equity. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. D don't Drake get on his shit saying, yo, Apple, thanks for that 20 million last time, but next time let's talk some ownership. Whether that was done or how much that ownership is, right? right? Of, of course I ain't giving no nigga no 50-50, but, but <laughs> who knows? If, if somebody's doing this thing so much and helping a brand and help further in the brand, I might be like, yo, what's up? All right, we could do 10. But if they're, all, if they're adamant that it has to be like 40% or more, what are you going to say? And we're, and we're just, just speculating because we don't know if this just actually happened. Speaking from right? other experiences, I'll grab like, that I feel nigga like and toss people... him out like Jazzy <laughs> Jeff and Fresh Prince. <laughs> you so get me? But, 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 you know what I mean? Again, it's all about leverage. It's all about business, right? Yeah, like, right. you have to find that little sweet spot. Shit, if that's your only horse in the race, right. the only horse in the race that's actively providing revenue. Not saying your hands are tied, but you're kind of incentivized to make that person happy right. until you get a roster. You got to get a roster. That's the thing with like Atlantic. One, one horse in, as long as you're not the top horse. If Cardi's not feeling good, the company's a little bit uneasy. If, I, mean, I was trying to say like Don't no one's less anything. or whatever, but, yeah. but like one of the guys who come out and they do a nice little 40K, if, if you're not feeling well, tough luck, nigga. You know what I mean? We're going to try twice to try to get you back on board, but tough luck after that. I feel like drama and can and can't really handle this in a, in a PR sense. Like, for example, if you've ever had any artist you've managed in and they've said something that you probably feel like, yo, I got a response for it. Yeah. But it doesn't really do you well to go be like, yo. Here's my interview responding to him. Right, 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 right. right, right. Like, you're not yeah. supposed can't to be win that. against the most popular person. Well, I mean, they haven't done that. I haven't seen him do any interviews speaking. Yeah, but anytime it. drama's responded on Twitter, I remember Uzi quoting him, like, What do you feel guilty? I didn't even say your name. Like, they, he knows how and to play it. And then he tagged him one time and said, Stop lying. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you can't win that war, unfortunately. I don't know, man. I don't know. I just think, I, now it's starting to get messy now, though. I just hope they resolve it. And, yeah. you know, Canon and drama are definitely like legends. Like, much respect to them. It's unfortunate that it got to this point. B besides Besides what I've what I've heard, I really just think Uzi's in like um, a new artist contract, and he just feels he's outperformed it. Yeah. He's also pocket watching, which is not really pocket watching when you're making all the money. You're making all the money. But this is the exact reason why. Like you, you know, I, I was I'm not gonna say anything. I won't call names, but I'm like this is exactly what happens to most artists. You come in with a hot song, you're like really bringing in all the money for a new like type of label. That's why they make you happy. Here's a couple cards, chill out, you feel me? Because when you get the, uh, the, the realization a year later when those royalty and like publishing checks start coming in and you start seeing that, wait, I thought I made more. Yeah, nigga, that's why you got a Ferrari the first month when you was in. <laughs> chill the fuck out. But it's business. Yeah. I just think that people are realizing Yo, these new artist contracts, we could probably finesse a little bit. Yeah, and it's a I little mean, bit sad though, because I always, I always feel like when you're signing your first deal, more than money, it's relationships. It's somebody who's probably take, trying to take you out of a situation that you were fucked up in, and they're trying to make you a millionaire. Right. Now, does that mean that they're not gonna take a good uh, portion of what you're making? Yeah, but they're probably investing, or you hope that they invested their time, their resources, and also they have placed a bet on you. So, you know, if Clearly that relationship between them has dissolved, which is the saddest part, because I remember seeing all three of them do interviews together. Yeah. All three of them. Yeah, absolutely. And 
he was singing their praises of how they worked together, and they were saying how talented he was, and they were both sharing the story of where he was when they found him. But none of that matters when it's just now about money. Yeah, unfortunately. Right? Mm. But yeah, hopefully they can work it out, and even if it's not soon, in a few years, like reconcile, right? It's gonna be soon. If, if, <laughs> if you had a label, mm -hmm. and an artist is doing all that, it's tagging you under my comments, Yo, all my fans want this album, but this nigga Wayno won't let won't let this out. I do do at some point you're getting thousands of comments, yeah, yeah. right? Because this is how I'm, I'm looking at. Do at some point you say, you know what? Clearly this guy doesn't want to be here, and I see a lot of people with that I don't philosophy. See nothing that don't want to be here. Oh, okay. But but do right. you just release him? No, well, well, for me, like, I might be a little un un unorthodox in my approach for shit like that because um, I've gone through situations like that and. I feel like if 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 you feel like I'm the problem, mm -hmm. you could go. Like, you know what I mean? Like you can go. Now, business still needs to be had, but at, at some point, depending on where I'm at in my life, I don't even give a fuck about the bread. And and maybe I haven't made enough money to give a fuck <laughs> about the bread. But for 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 me, my my um there's no price on my peace of mind. Like I, I can't put a, a price tag on my peace of mind. So if I feel disrespected and I feel like I'm not appreciated in in, in the situation, I'd rather let you go and, and and you go do whatever it is you need to do. And I and cause I always be me. Like one thing I I feel like with drama in them is, and I don't I'm I'm speaking specifically for myself as if I was in their shoes, I feel like if I could if I could build one artist to a certain certain place and I'm good at finding talent, it's a talent to find talent. I could do that shit again. Mm -hmm. And I could do it again and again and again and again. And coaches can always coach, players can't always play. So you have to be very mindful of how you treat people in these moments because you don't know where they'll be at. You never know when you need to lean on them. And and for me, you want to leave, it's like a relationship. You want to leave, all right, go. But when but but when you see that the grass ain't green on the other side, I don't want to hear shit. Don't it's come back late. to me bitching. I don't want to hear nothing. All right. Straight up. I wonder if he was signing to XO. I seen him show up for XO chain. All right. Stop <laughs> speculating. No, no, seriously. I thought he was. I, I seen that too, but I, that, that's just more of an affiliation thing. I think like, well, you see with the chains now, the chains is not always about like um, who signs to them. It's yeah. more of a like affiliation family thing. So I think the XO chain is just a family thing. Don't worry, you're gonna get the album soon. You don't have to sacrifice. Look, look, Ak is twitching. He need that. No, that no, EA. no, no, no. That EA. You can't sacrifice. Look, you know what? What Wayno said, like, that makes so much sense in the world. But I could imagine it's not that easy if, like, potential, potentially, it's like telling ten million dollars to walk out the door. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, ten million dollars? No, no, no. That's my peace of mind won't be good if that walks out the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, I. I don't know. I, I I haven't been in that situation, so you know, couple hundred, maybe you can leave. But we're, we're gonna see how this get resolved. I, I'm hoping it's not like some nasty court battle yeah. with like yeah. some settlement. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully not. Rock Nation, what'd you say? Human resources of rap? How, human resources of hip hop. That's what Rock Nation is. Every time somebody runs into a legal problem, a label problem, or a music problem, they go to Rock Nation. Even if they not signed there, they definitely the human resources. Cause people, I don't see kids signing there to be on the label. It's true, you know? just for help. You, you think Jay is calling over to like Don Can? Like, yo. Okay. I can't do the No, for real. Trying to do the Absolutely. voice. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, eventually there has to be a conversation had though. Like, it has to be a conversation. Jay's at hands on uh, over there? Huh? Like, he gets involved like that? Like, I, I think so, yeah. I, I, I haven't, like, I haven't worked with Jay in years, but yeah. I, I, I do think that you know, if it's something that's worth his while, if it, 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 he's like the person that can mediate a lot of shit, man. He, everybody, who doesn't want a phone call from Jay-Z? I don't give a fuck if you don't like him, you still be like, yo, Jay called me today. So I, I really believe that like, if there's something that needs to be mediated, he's the perfect mediator for situations like this. All right, we shall await the outcome. In other news, the reigning king of R&B, Jacquees, <laughs> pulled up to Big Boy's neighborhood to talk about why his remix of LMA's trip was removed from SoundCloud. Take a look. Jacquees, why were you asked to take down Trip? Remix. Really, DJ must have hated on me. Oh, really, though? You know what I'm saying? No cap. That was crazy. Shout out to YG. YG, my partner. And I want to work with DJ Mustard too, but that was a hate move because it was crazy. All right, so the song got pulled off the internet last fall, and at the time, Jacquees sort of insinuated that he got a cease and desist letter to move it, and Mustard later said he issued the cease and desist because Jacquees was allegedly profiting off the song. Mm. I do think it's kind of strange to call someone a hater and in the next sentence say that you want to work with them. I feel like that's not the way to build a relationship, but what do I know about anything? Well, let's think? educate the kids real quick on how he could possibly make some money off the song. So the thing about this is, like, you know, if you got ASCAP or BMI, and you put things out on the internet, you can monetize you like you can monetize your numbers. Whatever it is, whatever it is, numbers there's revenue. Right? So 
if you do a um a freestyle over somebody's shit, you can register the song. Mm -hmm. Right? It's so many songs going out that they can't keep track of everything. Are you getting money on like the spins or like ads playing? Yeah, you could a... there's there's different um uh, now like a uh, digital collection agencies. I, I don't know all of them. I know Sound Exchange is one. I think that's a little bit more formal where you have to there's a lot of red tape you have to go through in order to get down with them. But you can actually register a lot of these songs. That's why you, you can make money, you know, putting your shit out. But for Mustard to say that, he had to see it pop up somewhere or his lawyer had to catch some shit. Like, it's not just... It, and you can make it off of YouTube, too. So it, it, it had to have popped up somewhere for him to have seen it. Okay, so if he saw that and he was making money off of it, um, do you disagree with him for sending a cease and desist letter? I don't know what Jacquees is talking about. This nigga must be on some drugs. No, like, like let's be honest, man. Mustard signs LMA, right? Am I right? Yeah. And that's her big single. And here comes this leech. I'm sorry to say it Dang. like that, but wow. you're stepping all over my artist's toes. We don't care if but you But he have... said, by the way, for the record, he went on to say that LMA seemed excited about it, that they became that's friends, they cute. linked up. That's and... cute, because you know what? Any young artist is always going to be like, oh, a, new, uh, a bigger artist like likes what I'm doing. Right. But when almost you're stealing the moment without it even being a really official collab, I read that yo homie had a video out to his remix before she had a real video out. Yes, just fall back a little bit. And now when I, we're seeing it pop up all over the place where you might be monetizing again, I think it might have been on SoundCloud. Um, it was on SoundCloud, but it might have been re-uploaded to YouTube. We now have to stop it. I mean, I, I think that was the best move to help even though I love his song, trust me, I do love his song. But it's the best move to help a young artist gain some space that they could grow on their own. Playboy Cardi kind of felt the same way, even though it was like a manager or a label head doing it for him. He felt the same way when it came to, um, was it the Magnolia? Mm. He dropped Magnolia, he's finally getting some steam on a really popular song. Here come Tory Lanez with a goddamn remix. And, he, and, and Tory hit him and was like, yo, I want to do, like, yo, I'm, I'm about to remix this shit, send me the beat. He told him, nah. Yeah. Tory went online and got a remade beat and did it. So wow. now, you know, like, he's thinking, damn, I, this is supposed to be my time to get a finally get a hit record. Man, we got shot about Jay and everything. Yeah. Now here comes you, you rapping over it. People know you more than me at this point. Now they might be introduced to the song in a in a way we don't want to. We want people, this is an introduction to Cardi for a lot of people who haven't been following from SoundCloud. This is an introduction to LMA for a lot of people who just don't know who she is. Right. And if you're stepping all over that, it should be respectful. If you're not gonna be respectful with it, mm -hmm. if you're not gonna be reaching out and whatever, you're in the industry. This, you're not just some random nigga like just trying to come up. Yeah. You're in the industry too. If it's not gonna be respectful, we're taking your shit down. So wait, I don't have a problem with that. Would you feel the same if someone did this to one of your artists? Like one of your artists got a big breakout record and they did this? I, I mean, it, yeah, we, I would have to see the particulars. I think that um, because, like I said, like when a, when another artist jumps on something, it can also add steam to it, right? Yeah. A lot of artists don't do remixes because they don't want to make somebody else's shit hot. But if you're making my shit hot and it's only helping you and it doesn't help me. Yeah, we probably pretty much gonna do that. But sometimes it's beyond a mustard. You gotta remember, like, she signed to Interscope, which is Universal Music Group. So they snatch shit down immediately. Like, even what you, you ever see an artist post up a video and in an hour it just ran, it magically just comes down? They take down our episodes if you play a snippet. That's so why we don't play music. So anymore, it's a yeah. lot of different, and a, a lot of artists don't know that. Like, yeah. you, you might say, it's easy to say, all right, now Mustard did say that he had a part in it, but it's easy to, to point fingers at everybody else to say, oh, that's the face of whomever did it because it's their artist. No, sometimes Universal Music Group would snatch that shit down immediately because it wasn't authorized. Sure. And they got technology to detect that shit. That, yeah. that is very true. Like, because I know like even shit, me putting out a even a record recently, like you have to tell them all the authorized links and yeah. where it's allowed to be up. Right. If, if even the same record is put out elsewhere, it's coming down, if there's anybody using the same beat, yeah, it's coming down. Coming down right. Somebody used the acapella, however they got it, it's coming down. So that's actually a good point. So, I mean, if you got to take it down automatically, if you see, if you if you had that relationship where it was like, oh no, you could do the remix or whatever. And also keep in mind when it comes to remix, like if you take the person completely off the record and you're just doing it, it's like you're just doing the song again. You feel right, me? Right, right. You're not even trying to add to it. You're just trying to do your version and just forget about the, the new one. Or, or the original. Yeah. But if, if there was a relationship where 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 it was like, yo, you could do it, mm -hmm. they would hit, they would put it back in the system to say, 
yo, let's let's um, white flag this. Jaquise is allowed to do his remix. Mm. But that conversation probably didn't happen, and we ain't going to have that conversation afterwards, <laughs> where now you're probably using it on social media like, damn, my shit was so hot, they took it down. Mm. You know what I mean? Nah. All right. Social media, man, ripping, ripping the fabric of conversation. Yikes. He's always making some interesting uh, headlines. Let's see what else is to come. Um, all right, so my guy, Big Sean, we haven't heard too much from him recently, but he celebrated his 31st birthday yesterday. Happy birthday. Happy belated birthday. And to celebrate, he finally opened up about what he's been dealing with, his battle with depression and anxiety. Take a look. You know, around this time last year, around my birthday, you know, it was good for me, but it was wild for me, too, because I felt like something wasn't all the way connecting with my energy. You know, I'm big on energy. And I wasn't feeling like myself, and I couldn't figure out why. You know, so... What I did was I stepped back from everything I was doing, everything I had going on, because somewhere in the middle of it, the dog, I just felt lost. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't know how I got there. So what I did was I started therapy. You know what I'm saying? I got a good therapist. You know what I'm saying? I was blessed enough to uh, talk to some super spiritual people. And they made me realize one thing that I was missing in my life. And one thing I was missing was clarity. I make Mm. All right. Yeah, so he goes on to say, yeah, it was even affecting his relationship with his mom, etc. But now he feels like he's in a much better place, and he said he's making the best music of his life. It's nice to hear him open up about what's happening, because when people disappear, we don't know what's going on. And then as fans, are just sitting here bitching and complaining about music when people are going through real shit. I want to defer to the energy guru. <laughs> the energy bueno. guru. Uh, yeah, what do you think? Well, um, I, I always tell like a lot of like young artists this, like you know, when they're coming up, they're so anxious, like, yo, they get signed and they want everything to happen for them. And a big part of like success and, and money and happiness is responsibility. Mm -hmm. And you know, Big Sean, I mean, how long have we been watching him? About like 10 years now yeah. in the game, right? It, it, it seems, yeah, yeah about yeah, 10. he's been out here. Big Sean's been in the about about like 10 years. He's got a lot of great mixtapes before he started dropping the album. Shit, the Lemonade Freestyle, that shit was Actually, 2009, right. hell yeah. Right. So it's like, when you, when you look at it, it's easy to say, oh, it's just happening because he's dealing with this girl or he's in state. Yo, people go through real things. We don't know if he's lost people in his life. We don't know if, like he's, like he said, he's dealing with depression. Money does not, like, money has nothing to do with your inner happiness. Fame and, and money actually makes you a lot more miserable, I it, think. It, it does because it's, it, it's a lot, like, it's a lot riding on you. Everybody expects you to be the best 100%, 150% person you could be at all times. And sometimes you just want to chill and, and be a human and you make mistakes. And then when you do make a mistake, everybody makes it seem like they, they just- They crucify you. You're not allowed to be a human when the internet You're not is. allowed to be. So, I mean, it, it's good that he's opened up because, you know, Big Sean has always had a, a, a really great direction in his music with his fans and how he has like a cult fan base and how honest he is with them in music. But for, to hear him say this is really big. You know, it, it's really big because like I said before, you can't put no price on peace of mind. It's true. You know? Yeah, well, see, I had to defer to the energy guru. <laughs> because, because, because I'm not going to lie, honestly, when I first seen it, I'm like, damn, is this nigga moping over Janae oh, Aiko? Uh, see, exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, exactly. No, because that is, again, I'm just but going that can over be a piece again, of this. That can be a piece yeah, of it. All right, uh, so I'm just going over simple time, and I'm like, Ooh. But he's a human. Even if he was, they were right. like in love and dating. Yeah, but don't, like, don't be on. throwing no, don't be throwing words like energy that gotta need that gotta get weight on the decipher. Yeah, just come tell on, me, man. Just you... Tell me, I'm in my field still, and I just no, but, a that, but that has a lot. I mean, that has a lot to do with, with energy, man. I mean, you gotta think, like you gotta really think, like everything that makes us who we are is what us getting up. When you wake up, I tell this to my daughter every day. Like some days she gets up and she mad. I'm like, yo, don't start your day off mad because you had to get up and you gotta go to school because she just wants to fucking stay home some days and be a kid. No, you gotta you gotta wake up with the right type of mentality. You gotta wake up wanting to go and get it because if not, you're gonna have an effect on other people's days. And think about how many things an artist has to go through where they gotta do this other day. They gotta fucking smile. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's really tough. I mean, think about that for yourself, bro. Like, it's, it, it's, it's certain things that you go through or you go through that we don't always want to share and people might run down on you. Yo, act was good. What Wayne or Winnedesco? What's up with Joe Button? You don't want to hear that shit. And then if you lash out, then you're a fucking fuck nigga or an asshole. And then how does that make you feel internally? How does that make you feel inside? So you got to protect your energy, yeah. you know? What I did get when he said clarity, though, is that I think he's at the place in life where he probably has to address things that he hasn't addressed over the years. That's, that, that's the plight of many people who are chasing success in general. Like, you're usually so occupied mm -hmm. by whatever path you're on, you're just working, 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 working. You're neglecting certain things. And once you get to maybe a point of success 
where you feel comfortable enough and it, you could kind of take a step back, you start looking around and you realize that you've either, like, you haven't addressed certain things, whether it's like you've lost relationships or just things just have uh, became distant, like whether yeah. it's family, yeah. um, friends, your own mental health, shit. The effects of success, I don't think people talk about that. They I think don't. we think about success as something so beautiful and glorious when really it can be horrible. You yeah. know what I mean? All the things you sacrifice for your success and you get to the point that you always dreamed of and you didn't realize all the bullshit that comes with it and you always want more. Success is a mess. The thing about success is that success makes people into superheroes. I mean, like when... when Externally, when internally you're just still a regular person. You're still a regular person, but it's like, okay... Because the first thing a person says, like when... when now, I, I do feel like depression sometimes is leaned upon for kids to sell music nowadays. I, I, I Sometimes I really don't believe that all of these kids are as sad as they pro proclaim to be. And um, I don't never want to dim nobody's light, but I, a lot of things, like when they say, oh, I'm depressed, you be like, all right, what are you actually depressed about, right? It, it, and the people bottle shit up. But success, it, it, a lot of people don't attain the highest level, so they look at me or you or you like, Yo, what, what can you complain about? You on TV every day, you making money, but it's like you don't know my mom might be sick. Like my mom just had to get back a second back surgery. Yeah. That, that's not something I share with everybody, but it's hard not seeing my mom walk or run the way she used to be able to, do, like the way she used to. So I, I think th that you have to protect your energy, but with Big Sean, I'm just happy that he's expressing himself. I, I'm not a big person of doing it on social media, yeah. but I'm happy that he is expressing it because he might have kids looking up to him. Look at what Logic does. How many songs, I mean, how many kids did that, that suicide song, how many lives did he save with that? Right. You know? Hey, you know what? Also, resetting goals, you, like, I mean, I think humans, we're, we're kind of goal-oriented. Like, we need something to work towards and something to have hope for. Like, after you attain a lot of success and that was your goal, you have to, like, reset it or else right. you kind of fall in that rut. I mean, I know we, we laugh at him a lot, but, like, Bow Wow did say something like that where he was like, yo, yo he's like, yo, I did everything already. Right. And, you know, for him, it was just kind of falling into that rut of, yo, everything I'm doing now is just some shit that I did before. There's right. nothing new to look forward to. So it's, it's kind of depressing, that the, thought. The fucked up thing about it is I think, like, that's why it's hard to be a child entertainer. I think that's why, like, a person like Michael Jackson, it, it, as much as great of an entertainer he was, I think that he was out of his mind right. for a lot of his life. Because even with Bow Wow, right, and this is why I always give him the benefit of the doubt, you know what it is, man, to be a fucking kid. And I mean, we we deal with going to school. But you're robbed of like your real childhood. You're robbed of a child. Like Bow Wow didn't have the, like he didn't get the excitement of a new bike. Like he could buy anything or have anything he wanted. So it's a lot of experiences that he didn't have and it lashes out in different ways. I think that, and I always joke about him, like if he was taller, people wouldn't treat him the way that they do. But that, that's a, he might have, have issues with that. Like I'm not just, don't want to pick on him, but look at with Justin Bieber. People asking him for music, and he said, yo, I just need to chill a bit. Yeah. Yo, this kid at 10 years old playing the guitar, fucking get big deals, having all of these hit records and shit. Before you 21, you he burnt out. Music, you want me to do new music? You don't see all the shit I did? You know what I mean? It's like he just wants to have some time to himself. You need to be you know? able to just live life sometimes. Absolutely. Experience Absolutely. the small things. And that's well, a hard thing for you know a consumer to understand. It's true. Well, Sean, thanks for opening up. I miss you. Are you going to add something stupid? No, it's not stupid. This is smart. Let's see. <laughs> Whatever gets this nigga to drop a I don't fuck with you part two, I'm <laughs> down with it. If down this is it, it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't want no sad album, though. If he comes out with a sad album, I'm cutting that shit but off Sean track Sean doesn't really one. make that. Track one. But you like depression music. What are you talking about? But not from the rapping niggas. Hey, that's <laughs> like, from the melodic, uh, like, yeah, y'all niggas. Y'all niggas go moan about it, that's cool. like a goat but dying. Not, like, not like that, man. <laughs> y'all niggas go get in the studio and sound like goats off the auto-tune and just singing about who hurt you. Uh, not man. Big Sean, no. All I right, Sean. We're ready for the niggas. music. All right, so Bobby Shmurda called into Hip Hop Nation on Sirius XM, and they asked him if he would ever consider linking up with rappers like Meek Mill, fighting for criminal justice reform. Here's what he had to say. And the situations that you guys have been in have kind of been parallel in terms of criminal justice reform. So um, pairing up with him, is that something that you've thought about upon your release, whether whether or not you and him can work I on something? Like I tell people all the time, I respect what he doing. I can't do it, though. You understand? I can talk to the kids, but I ain't about to be sitting here protesting and politicking for no motherfucking cops because them motherfuckers don't care. They've been killing motherfuckers since Rodney Kent. You understand? And people mm -hmm. got to realize this shit. You understand?
All right, so he goes on to say, like, he respects people like MLK, but he just doesn't think he could deal with it. The criticism, he says, literally, people are throwing rocks, doing all sorts of shit, and then him staying positive through it. It does take a special kind of person to stand up against that, but are you guys surprised at his answer? Um, I think, that, no, I'm not surprised at his answer at all because his answer sounds misinformed and it sounds a little <clears> bit all over the place. Um, I get what he's trying to say, but it, it, it with, with justice reform, Meek is not just talking, he's not talking to police specifically, right? right? And he's not politicking with police specifically. He's um, making strides and doing things so that if you, if you are in a position where you do commit a crime, um, you're not held account like you're not held accountable for your whole entire life right like people going to jail child. for 20 years for minor weed offenses and dumb shit now like weed that. is legal yeah. everywhere right. are they, are they, now think about this a person who gets locked up for weed and has done 10 years for it now is legal think about the criminal that they've become in prison because prison does not rehabilitate mm -hmm. you know so think about that effect that it has on that one person when they do get out and they can't really adjust um i think that Bobby's just a little bit misinformed. I, I understood the point he was trying to make, but it's just a little misinformed. I guess some people might be surprised, obviously, just considering what him and his whole crew has gone through. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, you could call him misinformed, but I feel like it, it, Bobby's just, like many black Americans, he's just fed up with the system and fed up. It, he doesn't feel like shit will change. So he's like, yo, why the fuck would I be trying to do all these things to try to get changed through politics and all that when I know they won't be changed? It's, if anything, I'll speak to the people in my community, but that other shit, that's, that's, that's a show I ain't really down with doing that. Now, again, he's been locked up for a while. Um, perhaps he hasn't seen from where he's at any sizable change or change that affects him. Yeah. So why would he believe in change, right? But when he comes out, if there was probably some efforts to, you know, even look at, look at the charges that he got, he got locked up on. If there was some, uh, there was some initiatives to actually make clear and actually make sure some of those little uh, um, ways how you could get caught up in shit actually um, get more clear to, to just like regular citizens and also probably could help out people like him, he'd probably be down with it. But from what he's, he's probably looking at from, he's in jail like, the fuck am I over here trying to like ask these niggas to like. Yeah, but I mean, he says like, you know, uh, police been killing people. Like it, we're not talking about the issue of police killing people. Like that's, that, that's not, the issue here, we're talking about how Meek caught a, a gun charge, you know what I mean? He caught a gun charge uh, in 2007, mm -hmm. 2007, and in 2019, he's still being held to the standards of catching a gun charge in 2007. Now this man has, I think I think a lot of, of that has to do with him being a rapper. I feel like if Meek would have went on to become the manager at UPS or some shit, it'd be looked at a little bit differently just because of how professions are viewed in America. Now, because he's a rapper, he's just viewed a little different, right? They treat it a little bit different. But if, in terms of rehabilitation and being on probation, he's the epitome of somebody changing their life from a bad circumstance. So that's the issue that we're talking about here. We're not talking about, and, and we do have to tackle police brutality and misconduct and, and how these issues happen where a kid gets killed for doing nothing, but that's another story. That's not specifically what Meek is going on. Yeah, Bobby, I think Bobby will be some point involved in that if the opportunity presents itself. Listen, to keep it true, niggas only really care about shit that affects them, right? right. And it's, I mean, it's really unreasonable to think that you just care about every shit that, shit that just affects a bunch of other people, not you. So yeah, Meek is, Meek is really in it, mm -hmm. um, and he was drawn to it, and that was his purpose because what he went through, right? Yeah. And of course, if Bobby gets out, he'll probably be, I believe, on parole or some type of supervised like release. Right. You know, they don't just let you out and be like, go, go ahead. No, and he'll see. And if he's realizing that the way the system is set up, it is almost set up that his lifestyle, which he's hoping to come back to be a rapper and travel, and he still possibly wants to be around people who he considers his friends, that the in the eyes of the law might consider just criminals. Right. right, and those are additional pitfalls to get you back locked up. Right. When he gets to realize how it's set up like that, he probably would want that to change. Um, and again, it's just a maturation process of just complaining about it, just saying fuck the system, and just saying, you know what, if I could lend my celebrity to getting something changed, I'm doing it. Plus, he's probably gonna get the call from Jay. <laughs> right. Which might change Rock Nation and Human Resources. Yeah, right? right? They'll come fix it. Absolutely. All right, we got a couple stories, but we don't have time to make it to them. So, gentlemen, if you have any final thoughts before we go today. 
Not really. Let's see. Nah. <laughs> All right. Wait, we get to this next story? Nah. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, trust. It's been slow news-wise anyway, so we'll get to these tomorrow. Uh, keep sending us your fan questions. They've been really great. Recently, we have a few saved up. Uh, at Everyday Shrug on Twitter with two Gs. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow on Everyday Struggle. Yo, it's like a month more until I... <laughs> Yo, these stitches are going to be Yo, it's hurting more and more by the day. That's yeah. not good. Is it infected? <laughs>